the Kern Lafco August meeting. This is our first meeting of fiscal year. Recording in progress. This is the first meeting of our fiscal year 2022-2023. We have a bit of unfinished business from the June meeting and some new items for you tonight. I should note that we will be taking two items out of order from how they were listed on the agenda. The special district election results will be heard right after the public comments. Commissioner Sanders and McKibben are not in attendance. If the commission chooses to accept the results of the election, we can have an additional vote for the rest of the agenda with Mr. Shavira joining us. This becomes especially important when we get to the restricted public member, which will be moved to the last item that requires a vote of the commission. We need a third vote uh, for this item, which I will explain in more deep detail when we get there. Our presentations today are being manned by Mr. Heimer and uh, Mr. Rice, who is doing this remotely for the first time, so we're trying something new. Um, he was unavailable to be here, but he's, he's with us uh, by Zoom. Um, and hopefully that works out well. There are a couple of notes regarding how this meeting is held, both in person and by video conference. Let me provide what I think will be helpful tips for running this meeting, meeting smoothly. For, the, for our guests who are in the room, if you are a representative from an agency or hear from the general public and wish to speak on an item before the commission, we ask that you use the microphone at the podium. Allow the chair to recognize you and speak into the microphone. We are recording these proceedings and want to make sure you are heard clearly both in the room and online. For those attending by video conference, if you are from an agency or a public, your microphone is muted until the chair recognizes you and the host unmutes your microphone. There will be a opportunity to speak on specific items on the agenda. Please use the raise hand function on Zoom to be recognized. The raise hand function button is in different places depending on your version and device you are using to participate. If that doesn't work, wave at us and tell us you uh, uh, want us to, to uh, recognize you. Mr. Rice is, ho is host and is in charge of the Zoom portion of the meeting. If anyone gets disrupt disruptive, Mr. Rice has the authority to remove them from Zoom. Or if anyone needs to recuse themselves, Mr. Mr. Rice can place them in the waiting room and bring them back out again when the agenda item is completed. All votes will be roll, roll call voice votes. Commissioners on Zoom, please make sure you are unmuted when you, when you vote as we are recording and need to hear your response. Thank you to everyone for working with us. Uh, we've already started the recording and I turn this back to the chair to start the meeting. Thank you, Mr. Knox. Uh, Madam Clerk, we hear the roll. Commissioner Ayon. <laughs> Commissioner Ayon. Commissioner Couch? Here. Commissioner Ayon here. Thank you. Commissioner Crump? Commissioner Fowler? Here. Commissioner Parlier? Here. Commissioner Scrivener? I'm here. Commissioner Saragoza? Roll call complete. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Couch, would you lead us in the pledge, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. States of America. To the republic for which it stands. Which it stands. One nation. One nation. One nation. Liberty. conference meeting requirements, discussion and possible minute eye action, meeting protocol, a motion to hold the board meeting by teleconference pursuant to Assembly Bill 361 and Government Code Section 54953E, and finding that there is a proclaimed state of emergency and local officials have recommended measures to promote social distancing, all is required by AB 361, and section 54953E. Mr. Knox. 
It says, my recommendation to approve the findings of a state of emergency and local office official have recommended measures to promote social distancing as required by the requirements of AB 361. Is there public comment on this item? Are there commission questions or comments? I'll move it. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Couch, motion. Is there a second? Second. Who? Commissioner Ione. Thank you. Commissioner Ione. Could we have a roll call, please? Commissioner Ione? Aye. Commissioner Couch? Yes. Commissioner Fowler? Yes. Commissioner Paulier? Yes. Commissioner Scribner? Aye. Commissioner Saragoza? Aye. All ayes. Motion passes. Thank you. Our next item is the approval of the minutes of June 22nd, 22. Is there public comment on this item? Are there commission comments or questions? We'll move approval. Thank you. Commissioner Couch moves approval. Is there a second? Is there a second to the second. motion? Second, Commissioner Ione. Thank you, Commissioner Ione. May we have a roll call, please? Commissioner Ione? Aye. Commissioner Couch? Yes. Commissioner Fowler? Yes. Commissioner Parlier? Sorry, aye. Commissioner Scrivener? Aye. Commissioner Saragoza? Aye. All ayes, motion passes. Thank you. We'll go on to public comments at this time. This portion of the meeting is reserved for persons desiring to address the commission on any matter not on the agenda and over which the commission has jurisdiction. Speakers are limited to two minutes. If you wish to speak, state your name and address for the record before making your presentation. Do we have any public speakers tonight in the audience? Madam Clerk, do we have anyone on Zoom or phone? Right. Chair, I would like to say that uh, Commissioner Albright is present and has been. Uh, it, he should be included in the vote for Commissioner Pump. Thank you for that, Mr. Rice. Uh, at this point, um, item 7B is special district member and alternate. Results from the special district election for a regular seat and alternate as required in Government Code Section 56325C. Mr. Knox. Yes, thank you. Uh, Mr. Rice, please pl place the special district results on the screen. Thank you. We can see kind of the top half of it there. Okay. Um, the term for one of the two public members has expired. An election was held among the independent special districts where Kern County is the prime county to fill a new term for one of the two public member seats plus the alternate seat which has been vacant. Notifications were distributed, nominations were made, and ballots were sent out to each district. April 30th was the original deadline to turn the ballots, but a quorum was not obtained among the 85 special districts, which is not unusual. Uh, as required by Cortese Knox Hertzberg Act, a 60-day extension was declared making a new deadline June 30th. A quorum was reached by that deadline on Friday, July 1st, a meeting with Les Clark, chair of the Kern County Special District Association, was held to count the ballots. The results were uh, five for John Blythe, 14 for Carlos Chavira, 11 for Joe King, 17 for Karen Sanders, and one ballot had two names marked and was not included in the count um, because the spread of the votes between the candidates it did not have effect on the outcome. With the most votes, Karen Sanders uh, will again fill the special district seat. Carl Shavira will be the alternate. And the, the LAFCO Commission acceptance of the results completes the process and allows for the seating of the special district commissioner and, alt and special district alternate. Is my recommendation to accept the results of the special district election, seat Karen Sanders for a four-year term ending in 2026, and seat Carlos Shavira as the special district alternate for a term ending in 2026. Um, are there commission comments or questions on this vote or public comment? 
Any public comment, Patty? Oh, can we do this in one vote? You'd have to do a roll call. A roll call. So I'll move your recommendation. All right. There's a motion to approve the recommendation to confirm Karen Sanders as special district member and Carlos Shavira as alternate. Uh, do we have a second? Second, Commissioner Zaragoza. Thank you, Commissioner Zaragoza. May we have a roll call, please? Commissioner Ayon? Aye. Commissioner Kelch? Yes. Commissioner Albright? Aye. Commissioner Fowler? Aye. Commissioner Parlier? Aye. Commissioner Scrivener? Aye. Commissioner Zaragoza? Aye. All ayes, motion passes. Great. Chair, with that, Mr. Shavira, welcome to the commission. Uh, you're welcome to have a seat up here. Wherever you like. Bravo. <laughs> and our congratulations to Karen Sanders, who's not here with us tonight. <laughs> a warning from Commissioner Couch. <laughs> All right. Uh, next will be noticed public hearings. Mr. Schroeder, do you have a comment? Yes, Madam Chair. Uh, the executive officer indicated to me that we have a new member. He also indicated that one or two members uh, after the last meeting when we were uh, considering these two island annexations mentioned to him that they would like to know more about the law that, that underlies these annexations. So I, always th I thought we would take a couple of minutes, not much more than that, to just explain the code section and your responsibilities as a commission. Um, this is, uh, this results from pockets of, of unincorporated land being surrounded or substantially surrounded by the city. Uh, through various annexations, these little pockets of unincorporated land end up being in the middle of the city or surrounded by the city, but not receiving city services they're receiving county services. Um, if they fit certain requirements in the law, uh, the, for, the type of annexation that uh, the city can ask for is what we would call a streamlined form of annexation. Uh, it doesn't allow for a protest hearing, that's primary. So you don't, you cannot um, deny the annexation based on the fact that you think the majority of the people in that area don't want to be annexed. The, the basis for rejecting an annexation of that type uh, is the, uh, if you can find that one of six requirements is not present in, in the application. The, the first item is, the first requirement is it must be less than 150 acres in size. Uh, it must be incorporated within the city and substantially surrounded by the city. It must have public utility services available or have public improvements or physical improvements on the property. Uh, the area that it's subject for uh, annexation must either benefit from the annexation or be receiving benefits from the city that is attempting to annex it. If you wish to deny the annexation, you must, there must be enough in the record to show that at least one of those requirements doesn't exist. This annexation, once you approve it, if you do approve it, that's final. It doesn't go to a protest hearing. The, the property owners or the voters within that area do not have the right to protest. Now, this is something that the legislature did. It's quite different from a typical annexation, and, and I think that's probably because uh, what you have with a pocket surrounded by a city is that those people living within that pocket, if they want law enforcement services or they want fire services or they want code enforcement services, they call the county. Even though a, a police officer from the city might be down the street or a fire department station might be down the street, they have their, the, the, the group that services them is the county. That's a, that's a, uh, that's a detriment to those living, I think this is the legislature's fi finding, that it's a detriment to those living in that area that they have to wait for the service. It's a detriment to the county that it has to pay for that service. A detriment to the city if the city responds because they're closer, because they're not getting paid for that. 
So I believe that the legislature adopted this approach for the uh, efficiency of government. Uh, but the main thing is there's no public protest. There's no uh, protest of those living within it. It's not, not a matter of whether everyone in that area doesn't want to be annexed or a majority don't want to be annexed. So if you have any questions, I've now there's one other thing. If you deny the annexation and it's not pr appropriate, all six of those elements are present, and the city decides to sue you because you didn't follow the law, the indemnification agreement that the city has signed doesn't apply in that case. You would have to defend the case at your own cost. The only time that the city has to indemnify is if you approve the annexation and one of the property owners sues you. Then it's up to the city to defend the annexation. So if there are any questions, I'd be happy to answer. Are there questions from the public? Are there questions from the commission? I, I have one. Mr. Couch, Ms. Commissioner. Um, you said that this is uh, this action is final, and that I, I I take it that you mean that that is it's final as far as LAFCO is concerned. But the city of Bakersfield still has an action to take after this, and they can take as long as they would like to. I think it's my understanding to get her to finish the annexation. Is that is that the way you understand it? But it's final as far as we're concerned. It's final as far as we're concerned. I don't know about the city. Sir. So after Sorry. it's approved, there's a post post hearing process where we do a number of things, including recording the documents for it. We do an invoice to the city, and we have up to a year to finish that. If it's not finished within a year and been recorded, the annexation dies. Does the city have any more? Do they have any other here? I know. Uh, the assistant city manager from the city of Bakersfield is here tonight. He may be able to shed some light. But I think they have to do, take another action as well. Am I wrong about that? Can I, can I, Madam Chair, can I, can I ask that of him? Uh, Mr. Hallen, would you like to speak for the city? Is that on now? That's on, right? Okay, there yes. we go. Uh, that's correct. Uh, the city would then take an affirmative resolution that this area that's been approved by LAFCO Commission is formally uh, incorporated into the city. So that the city would have to affirm LAFCO's action. So thank you for that. The reason I'm mentioning that is if there are outstanding issues that a property owner may have <clears throat> that they want to continue to work with the city on, that opportunity still exists. The time and the opportunity still exists even after our action. That's the only point I was trying to make. Thank you, Madam Chair. I have another question for Mr. Hallen. Oh, what action do they take to finally confirm the annexation? It's just a resolution. A that, resolution before uh, the that council. It's, uh, and, and Mr. Boyle, our Development Services Director, also said that we assign that area uh, its ward designation within the seven wards of the, of the city. So that's the other action that the city is then placing, not just being in the city as a whole, but here's the ward that it resides in. Yeah, we, we don't determine what ward they, no. they go into. Yeah. Okay. Are there other commission questions or comments? Uh, this is Commissioner Jaragosa. Um, <clears throat> just out of curiosity, and this is probably for Attorney uh, Fallgatter or Mr. Mr. Blair, question is, is there a definition that LAFCO has for substantially surrounded? Do you want to answer that, Mr. Schroeder, or you want me to? Yeah, no. Um, right now, that, that, that doesn't come into play because all of the, all of the parcels are so, so fully surrounded by the city. That's true of the two annexations that we have. Uh, if we come to an annexation in the future that is not completely surrounded, the commission will have to make a determination of, of substantially surrounded, of which we do not have a definition. But that does not apply in, in today's two annexations. They are completely surrounded. Mr. Zaragoza, uh, did you have more? Yeah, Commissioner Zaragoza, I'm sorry, Mr. Fallgatter, yeah, Mr. Schroeder, should we pro be proactive and have a definition for substantially surrounded? He's looking at me, so I'm going to answer the question. 
Um, we have multiple times over the years held policy committees to try to address this. All of them have failed to come up with a definition that everyone can agree with and bring back to the commission. So um, it's always uh, an opportunity to take another shot at it. Uh, the city of Bakersfield or any city could come to us and, and with a annexation that's at least partially surrounded and make the case that it should be considered con substantially surrounded if approved and we have kind of a um, um, template of what we need to do going forward. Um, uh, I'm not sure that's the word I'm looking for. Um, so yeah, we would have, say it was 75% surrounded and you accepted that, if they come with what, what one with 80% surrounded, they could say, hey, you've done- In a precedent set. A precedent, that's the word I was looking for, thank okay. you. Um, but that's not, uh, there could be other considerations of why you wouldn't, so you'd have to bring those forward as well. Are there this other is Commissioner Zaragoza again, uh, maybe the last question. Uh, so would you recommend that, I would recommend, it appears that to be proactive and visionary, that maybe we should consider that, and if so, would that come out of the policy committee or would that come out of the commission as a whole? It would, it would go to the policy committee first to make a recommendation to the commission as a whole. The policy commission, policy committee would not directly make that decision. It would always come back to the commission to for approval. Can I make a referral that the policy committee be activated to resolve this issue? Yes, you may. Do we have to approve that or that's just, how does that work? You can do that, Madam Chair. I would wait for the recommendation of the executive officer on that though. All right. Um, Mr. Knox, could we have a report at our next meeting on that issue? And I'm interested in what other communities, other counties do, uh, if they've defined sur substantially surrounded or not. I, I can do, do that, that, and we, we actually have some of that data already. Okay. It's, it's been presented before in the past. I know, I'm, <laughs> I've been aware have, of that. I just have to find it. <laughs> okay, that's great. Commissioner Zaragoza, are you satisfied now or any other questions? Any other I questions? I think that's a good start, uh, but definitely uh, we need to have that resolved. It would appear it's better to be prepared than to uh, deal with it with uh, a lot of unknowns since uh, it, it is a uh, deliberate decision-making process that requires review and processing and analyzing. It's not a spur of the moment decision, but I think that's a good start, thank you. Other commission questions or comments? I have one. Mr. Couch, go ahead. I'm old enough to have been around long enough to have been involved in probably all of those discussions. And so I'm gonna characterize it a little bit differently. It's not that we failed to come up with a policy, it's that we decided we should leave it as is and just use the terminology substantially surrounded and make a finding or a, or a decision on a case-by-case -case basis. Didn't we, isn't that the way we kind of left it in the past? That is After true. After a lot of gnashing of teeth for. Yes, the la last time we, we went through this process, we did come up with a couple of alternative alternatives and none of them worked either legally or practically. And so much. So when I say fail, that's what I meant. But yeah, you are correct that, that the position is that uh, there is not a, a set definition that the commission handles it when it's brought before them. Okay. And the case law makes it pretty clear that it's the, uh, the facts of the circumstance that will define what substantially surrounded means. It, it's not just a, a formula, it's not a percentage ne necessarily. It's what's, what's going on in that area. Thank you. Other questions or comments from the commission? I wanted to make that same point that after lots of gnashing of teeth and many meetings and lots of discussion, uh, LAFCO has decided in the past to not create a policy on that definition. And um, so that's kind of where we stand. Uh, but Mr. Schroeder, would you mind clarifying, you said if LAFCO fails to approve an island annexation, that LAFCO could be sued by the city of Bakersfield? That's correct. 
and LAFCO would be, of course, responsible for our attorney fees. That's correct. For you to defend it, it this. It would not be me. I don't handle oh. the litigation. Okay. <laughs> but yet, you would be responsible for your legal fees. Yep. Gotcha. All right. Thank you. Um, without further comments, um, we're going to go to item 6A, City of Bakersfield, 1798. Uh, this is an annexation, 705 Panama, number 26, Island Annexation. And this is continued from our previous meeting. Mr. Na oh, let me read this first. The proposal is to annex approximately 58.39 acres of land in two locations, generally located along the southwest and southeast corners of the Panama Lane and Progress Road intersection. The annexation was initiated by the City of Bakersfield for the purpose of minimizing the presence of county islands. This proposal does not have 100% landowner consent. The applicant has requested an island annexation under California Government Code 56375.3 which requires notice hearing and waives protest hearing. Mr. Knox. Thank you, Madam Chair. Let me make this complicated again. It's one of those kind of meetings. Uh, when we sent the agenda packet out, there was a link to the video of the June Kern LAFCO meeting. Watching the video allows those who did not attend to see all the testimony of the items that were continued uh, for this, I this current meeting. If everyone who did not attend the meeting watched the video, I, and I checked this out with Mr. Schroeder, I do not have to make the full presentation on all three continued items. You would also wouldn't need to hear from the candidates of the restricted public member seats again. So that, that leads me to ask the question of those who didn't attend last time, did you watch the video? I have affirmative from Mr. Couch. Do we need a roll call on that? Um, it would be uh, Commissioner Parlier, uh, Commissioner Scribner, I believe. Aye for Parlier. Yes. Yes for Cal. Yes from Scrib. Yes from Scribner. Their response should be on the minutes too. Okay. Fowler, yes. Commissioner Shivera, did you have a chance to watch the video? Okay, so we're gonna have to go through the full process. Not a problem. Just, I was looking for a an possibility <laughs> to uh, shorten the meeting a little bit. So tonight we have two City of Bakersfield annexations that were continued from the June meeting. I'll make two presentations each and I will turn it over to, to Assistant City Manager Helen for an update on his conversations with uh, the property owners that requested the continuance. Let's start with Panama number 26. And Mr. Rice, if you can put the map of that up on the screen, that would be great. This annexation was continued at the request of Vulcan Materials, uh, which is a cement plant. This area is completely surrounded by the city of Bakersfield. By definition, this is considered an unincorporated island. Technically, it is two islands with a railroad right of way between, that the, between the two that was brought into the city with a previous annexation. The annexation meets all the requirements in Section B of Government Code Section 56375.3 and is therefore eligible for the use of the island annexation provision. The existing uh, zoning on the county is LI Light Industrial and R1A intes in sorry, Intensive Agriculture. The county zoning is M1PD Light Industrial Precise combi Combining. M three PD heavy industrial precise development combining and a exclusive agriculture. The city land use designation for the area is SI service industrial LA light industrial and R one a resource intensive agriculture. City land use designation for the area is SI service industrial LA light industrial and R one a resource in intensive agriculture. Uh, and that way there is no land use conflict between with the changes of the um, general plan and zoning. Uh, it's also consistent with the regional transportation plan and specific plans. There's no uh, farmland uh, conversion. There is not a disadvantage on incorporated community. Uh, it's consistent with commission policies, conforms to the assessor parcels. There's no functional overlap with other agencies. There's no additional water going to be, need to be supplied at this time. There's no tax increase. 
CEQA is handled by notice of exemption adopted by the applicant. And uh, the applicant has filed as uh, signed an indemnification agreement. Effective and overlapping agencies and districts were notified. No comments were provided. Annexation to the city does not have 100% landowner consent. The city has requested that protest hearing be waived in accordance with the uh, government code section 56375.3. This code section requires the LAFCO commission to approve an annexation without protest hearing if the applicant meets several requirements. In review of the application, the city has met these requirements. The, requ the re process required by the Cortese Knox Hertzberg Act has been followed, including notices to affected agencies and any notices publications required by law. Before I turn to Mr. Hallen, I received an email today from the uh, law firm that represents Vulcan Materials. Uh, the property owner says, I, I appeared, to, this is from Paula Hernandez, and says, I appeared at the last LAFCO hearing on behalf of my client, Vulcan Materials, to object to the City of Bakersfield annexation number 705, Panama number 26. The item was continued to today and is listed as item 6A on today's agenda. Um, I am following up with this email to inform you that Vulcan Materials will no, no longer object to uh, annexation number 70, 705 at today's meeting. Please call me if you have any questions. So they um, no longer have objection to being annexed. With that, I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Hallen to give an update on his conversations with them and possibly other property owners. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Knox. And and one thing that I wanted to piggyback on of, uh, of the council's uh, or the, the commission's attorney um, is, is really this is a, a state law, the an island annexation, that the city is trying to adhere to and follow. Um, so it's... I, I realize that some on this commission don't like that state law, but we're, we're just trying to follow it. And, and as, as the statement was from council, this is really efficient government. This is, this is uh, good governance and, and many of these uh, residents and businesses will be able to uh, find that the services in the city will be a benefit to them. And this is one example. When we, when we met with uh, Vulcan's attorney, uh, we we wanted to meet quickly with them to show that that we're ready and available you know good customer service from the city standpoint we asked them for a list of questions um, and they, they gave us that list in order for us to be ready if we needed to have other de city departments at the table to quickly answer their questions because we're a city that serves and wants to be of service uh, we went through several of their questions and uh, primarily most of their questions were around their use and if their use was appropriate according to the city zoning. Um, the other questions they had were also if uh, in certain cities, and, and I've heard of this, that there's an amortization ordinance, which that is after a certain period of time, um, even though you are legal nonconforming, uh, the city can, uh, in a sense, uh, determine that you're no longer <coughs> eligible to operate as a business mm. so uh, our city does not have that so it's not something that we would ever take any action on Vulcan we let them know that that's not something that we would do and we would want them to continue to operate and be a successful business as city of Bakersfield is very business friendly um, we talked a lot about their um, questions about utility whether it electric or gas which will remain the same also, their trash and, and water connections um, will also remain the same. So uh, we felt it was a very good meeting. Obviously, the result was a positive letter from their attorney that um, we stepped up to the table, answered their questions, and provided good customer service. I, I do want to just uh, say that we've got some great uh, folks that work for the city. We've got uh, Chris, Christopher Boyle here. Um, our development services director and uh, Jose Fernandez that, that did a great job of follow-up. Um, which is what we try to do um, for the businesses that, that reside in each of these areas. So with that, that's my presentation. Thank you. Are you willing to take some questions if you there bet. are some? Are there any first, any questions of Mr. Hallen while he's at the mic? I have a question for him. Yes, Mr. Knox. In your responses, were there any new policies 
that were were discussed, or were, the, were, were all these established policies of the city of Bakersfield? Uh, can you clarify that a little bit? Like you respond to them about um, zoning and, and and fees and all of those things. Were any of those new policies that were created? They were all, or were they all existing policies that you were just re reiterating to them? Of, of how the city handles? Yeah, th those are all existing practices and policies that are part of our municipal code, um, that, that we have business licenses, uh, we've got zoning standards and, and requirements, and so none of those were needing to create or establish any new policy. Thank you. Other questions for Mr. Holland? I have one for you, sir. Did you reach out to the other landowners? So w within uh, this area, we did a mailer and, pr and asked for feedback and comment. Was that the, since our last the, meeting? It was in the original, the original. Uh, original application process. So also in this area, um, there is that storage unit, the, uh, the Daryl storage. Daryl storage which previously uh, they had questions and our, our development services and planning staff did a great job of resolving their, their concerns and answering questions in advance of the last meeting. Um, so there, there was another question that was out there but previously already resolved. So. Actually, that was one of the reasons why this, commit, this annexation took so long because you actually did change zoning for their behalf That's before this annexation moved forward. <clears throat> well, I'm going to put you on the spot again. You had very nice response to when that happens, but I looked at our meeting uh, video and got some quotes from you about um, annexation. This. Both of these applied to the Juetta 1 and 2. But you said that you're happy to sit I'm looking for my notes. You're happy to sit down and talk. And my comment is after the annexation in those cases, doggone it, I don't know where I put that, um, you were s saying that you sent out extra material as a courtesy. Um, my point is all of this should have done before the annexation came to us. Vulcan would probably not have had a problem if they had known all of these things in advance and that requires better contact from the city. So what I would love to see in the future is that you don't just send a letter and a, a list of FAQs that don't really apply to island annexation and instead that you're very careful to actually make, uh, you know, touch either by phone or uh, by neighborhood meeting. Uh, and, and in most of these cases, the annexation areas are very small, would not be difficult to do a neighborhood meeting to let people know in advance. And you talk about the benefits of the city and so on. M sell yourselves. And then you won't have grumpy people like that poor gentleman who came to our last meeting who hadn't heard nothing about it except a neighbor happened to tell him. So that, that's what I would encourage you to take back to Mr. Esselman and to city council. You know, do that uh, outstanding outreach early. And here we have a second uh, annexation that was delayed. Also, I believe the pastor of the church would have liked to have known a lot of these things before learning that he was, his property was to be annexed. So I don't mean it as a reprimand, just an encouragement uh, to do better because if you have something great to sell, sell it. Okay, are there other public comments or commission comments? Okay, um, we need a motion. Commissioner, I'll move approval. Commissioner Albright has a question. Go ahead, Commissioner Albright. Yes, uh, good evening again, uh, Mr. Hallen. I appreciate our recent meeting and I as I recall uh, the uh, that little island that we're talking about the cement plant was part of our discussion and I think you were ongoing with uh, communications with them 
at the time back and forth. Is that not, is that not my uh, correct memory for that? That that's correct, uh, Commissioner. We we actually didn't uh, hear from them when we sent out the original mailer um, until the day before the last LAFCO commission um, expressing that they wanted uh, a deeper look at the annexation to analyze um, the potential impacts. Uh, so um, we, as soon as we had that notice that they had concerns because we didn't hear from them uh, prior to the meeting, um, in order for us to sell ourselves and, and have that conversation, um, we then took that as an affirmative action to then set up a, a meeting and go through conversations. So yes, those, those conversations did take place. We put it in your packet and of an outline of those conversations and it's everything, all of their questions has, has been resolved. Yes, sir. As I recall, you were heading towards a win-win situation as it seems to have been accomplished. And I congratulate you for that. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Other commission questions or comments? I believe we have a motion on the table. You, oh, you, do, not have a rec you do not have a recommendation yet. Oh, I beg your pardon. That's okay. Mr. Knox, take it away. It is recommended that the commission consider the notice of exemption filed by the applicant. Uh, and approve the, the determination that the criteria for annexation of an unincorporated island under section 56 375.3 has been met and no exclusions have been identified or presented accordingly. The commission approved annexation number 1798, Panama number 26 into the city of Bakersfield. The protest hearing is weighed with conditions recommended by the executive officer. Commissioner Couch, does that serve your needs for that motion? That is more than adequate. All right. We're waiting for a second to that motion. Do I hear a second? Yes. <laughs> a second to your motion. I'm sorry, who was that? That was uh, Commissioner Zaragoza. I second the motion. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. May we have a roll call, please? Commissioner Ayon? Aye. Commissioner Couch? Yes. Commissioner Albright? Aye. Commissioner Fowler? No. Commissioner Parlier? Aye. Commissioner Scrivener? Aye. Commissioner Saragoza? Aye. Commissioner Chavira? Aye. One no, seven ayes, motion passes. Thank you. Our next item is 6B, 1801, City of Bakersfield, uh, Annexation 697, Taft 03, Island Annexation. Would you like to make your comments or have me read that section of explanation? Please read that. All right. This proposal is to annex approximately 19.54 acres of land, generally north of Taft Highway, approximately an eighth of a mile east of Mountain Ridge Drive, the annexation was initiated by the City of Bakersfield to allow for the use of city services. This proposal does not have 100% landowner consent. The applicant has requested an island annexation under California Government Code 56375.3, which requires notice, hearing, and waives protest hearing. Mr. Knox. Yes. Taft number three was continued at the request of the church, and I see the pastor here again today. Thank you for coming. The proposed annexation is completely surrounded by the city of Bakersfield. This annexation meets all the requirements of section B of government code section 56375.3 and is therefore eligible for the use of this provision. Uh, existing Kern County zoning is A1 limited agriculture and A1 MH limited agriculture mobile home combining. Pre-zoning for the entire annexation area is a agriculture and existing general plan designation is RR Rural Residential. It is consistent with the general plan, regional transportation plans, or specific plans. There's no ag land conversion. There's no disadvantaged community. It's, it's consistent with commission policies. It conforms to assessor parcels. There's no functional overlap. There are no additional water will be required. Uh, so it has an adequate water supply. 
There's no tax increase. Notice of exemption uh, handles the CEQA issue, and we have an indemnification agreement from the city. No effect affected and overlapping agencies and districts were notified and no comments were provided. Annexation to the city does not have 100% landowner consent. The city has requested that protest hearing be waived in accordance with government code section 56375.3. In review of the application, the city has met all the requirements. Their process, re well, I've already read that. Mr. Helen, uh, similar to the last item, item, please give us an update on your communications with the property owners. Thank you, Mr. Knox. Uh, we also had a very productive meeting with uh, the Daybreak Baptist Church and uh, Pastor, Pastor Acock and, and uh, Mr. Swartz were in attendance. And um, I, I really felt like uh, we came into the meeting knowing a little bit about what the, the church's concerns were because of the, um, the last LAFCO meeting. So it was good to be able to touch base with them. But I will say even before that, um, our, our superb planner, uh, Jose Fernandez, was already meeting with and talking with in advance of that, um, the church. So uh, again, we're trying to provide the best customer service uh, we can to uh, potential residents and, and future businesses. Um, we talked a lot about sewage uh, and connection fees and, and water connection. Um, a, another way to, uh, to talk about this is that if the, if the church does decide to uh, connect, which is certainly optional, it's not a mandatory thing because they're currently on septic, but if they ever decide to um, jump over to the connect to the city system, uh, we allow that connection to be paid back, that con those connection fees to be paid back over an eight-year period. Um, so for churches and for residents, that's a, a great benefit to be able to pay that back over time. Uh, we talked about uh, water connections, if they, if they so choose or if they decide to uh, deepen their well or drill a new well, that's something that, that uh, they can, they can um, go down that road as well. Uh, we also talked about um, expansion plans that the church uh, may want to do, as well as um, maybe some block walls uh, to help with some residential uses around uh, around that bidding, uh, around their building and their property. I really felt like it was a productive meeting. Um, we we left that meeting with uh, some some uh, final discussion on their sign, uh, with the resolution of where where they might go with that of trying to get that done. Um, sooner rather than later but uh, all in all i really felt like it was a again a, a productive meeting and and um again available to answer any questions that, at the end of that meeting sorry at the end of that meeting they did not have any any further uh, uh need to meet with the city they felt like they had what they needed um, i'm i'm sure they're here to to speak to it so they they should be given um opportunity but that that concludes my presentation Thank you. Are there any comments of, uh, or questions from the public for Mr. Howland? Do that first. And any commission questions for Mr. Howland? Commissioner Parlier has a question. Please go ahead, Commissioner Parlier. <laughs> Mr. Howland, I have a, a quick question for you. Yes, sir. Now, you said that uh, residents or businesses have eight years to pay back those sewage connection fees. That's also interest fee interest free. Is that correct? Uh, thank you, council member. That is that is correct. Uh, wanted to set the record straight. That is interest free. No interest accrues during that eight, eight year period, which is even a greater benefit. Thank you. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Other commission questions or comments for Mr. Howland? Commissioner Albright has a question. Go right ahead, Commissioner Albright. Uh, yes, hello again, sir. And I think we also at our last month's meet uh, had some conversation regarding this. And I was curious about the feedback of if you might call them parishioners of the church. Was there some positive uh, issues there? It sounds to me like you had some pretty successful uh, uh, com conversations with those folks. So I, I was just curious of how the the uh, parishioners might have felt. Well, I'm going to let the church respond to that. I'm not, I uh, don't want to answer questions that I, I am not familiar with, but uh, sorry. <laughs> we'll be having Pastor Haycock speak, yeah. I'm sure, in a couple of minutes. Are there questions for Mr. Howland before we're done? Uh, 
quick question from me. Um, does the city help with the cost of decommissioning septic? So the actual cost of the installation will be on the that will be on the property owner to to take on those costs. It's the connection fees that we would charge. That's the only control mechanism we have, I right? See. So we don't char the 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 actual construction company that does the work of decommissioning and removing. We can't tell them to not accept a fee. Got gotcha. you. Uh, for being paid for their work. Got gotcha. you. So. Other questions for this gentleman? Commissioner right. Zaragoza has a question. Go right ahead, Commissioners. Uh, quick question, more curiosity from an administrative perspective, Mr. Helen. I assume uh, any kind of public safety services like fire or police will be city uh, uh, sponsored after the annexation is approved. Uh, that means, is that going to be an issue? Is there a nearby police station, not police station, but fire station and whatnot? Uh, or is the county still involved in a joint powers agreement format? So it's a good question, Commissioner. Uh, because this is entirely surrounded by the city already, the city already provides services past further south uh, and and completely surrounding this area so that won't be a problem we're already uh, servicing that area from a police and fire uh, standpoint thank you other questions from the Commission thank you mr. Hallen are there public comments pastor Thank you. We appreciate the opportunity to speak. I'm Norm Aycock, pastor of Daybreak Baptist Church, and I have with me uh, Mr. Ron Schwartz, who's our business affairs uh, uh, committee chairman. Uh, we did meet with the city uh, people about a month ago. Uh, had a great uh, meeting with them, as Mr. Hallen has said. I would like to commend them for their uh, good communication with us, uh, particularly Jose Fernandez. Uh, who was uh, the point man, I suppose, and uh, working with us and keeping track of what we need and what other things we may have to talk about. And there are still uh, things that we're working, I think, with the city on uh, up through the end of this year about our sign. But we believe that we did get the answers that we wanted, and uh, I just wanted to commend them for their, for their patience and even long-suffering. In, uh, in working with us and going over and over with the questions, many, many questions that we had. We do appreciate your work and uh, thank you for, uh, for your help. I don't live in the city myself. I wish I did. Uh, we live over in a county pocket up in the north, northwest area, but uh, uh, we just really feel that uh, we have a wonderful city. I'm proud to live here. I've lived here twice in my life. I'm a Southern California beach boy, but uh, this is just a great place to live. I love Bakersfield, and I think the city is a good place to live and grow up and get old in. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. May I suggest a side hustle for you working for the Chamber of Commerce? <laughs> <laughs> Are there other public Comm comments? Other comments from the Commission? Commissioner Albright has a question go right ahead sir yes pastor I think that uh, this was also a very positive uh, showing for not only your your church and your folks uh, your members but also it seems that uh, mr. Hallen has once again hit the bricks running since he's uh, somewhat uh, new to the area and uh, has provided some successful and happy people uh, within that that's just the thought that I had thank you very much other commission comments I'll uh, not do you have a recommendation for us I do okay. <laughs> go ahead mr. Knox it is recommended the Commission consider the notice of exemption filed by the applicant and approve 
uh, a determination that the criteria for annexation of an unincorporated island under Section 56.375.3 has been met and no exclusions have been identified or presented accordingly. It is further recommended that the Commission approve annexation 697 Taft Highway Number 3 to the City of Bakersfield waiving notice protest hearing as required by Government Code Section 56.375.3 and subject to conditions recommended by the executive officer. Do I hear a motion to uh, approve the staff recommendation? I move approval. Mr. Couch uh, is providing the motion. Do we have a second? Second. Is that Mr. Commissioner Albright? Albright? All right. Commissioner Albright, now may we have a roll call vote. Commissioner Ayon? Aye. Commissioner Couch? Yes. Commissioner Albright? Aye. Commissioner Fowler? No. Commissioner Parlier? Yes. Commissioner Scrivener? Aye. Commissioner Saragoza? Aye. Commissioner Chavira? Aye. One no, seven ayes. Motion passes. Thank you. Our next item is 6C. 86, uh, 1806, Sphere of Influence, Five-Year Questionnaire Review. Pursuant to Government Code Section 56423G, on or before January 1, 2008, and every five years thereafter, the Commission shall, as necessary, review and update each sphere of influence. Mr. Knox. When that law was passed, uh, Government Code Section 56425G, a decision was made by this commission uh, when the law became active to handle these sphere of influence reviews with a questionnaire. This spring, a questionnaire was sent to all cities and special districts for which Colonel Lafka has conducting authority. Of the 93 questionnaires that were sent out to special districts, less than half have been returned. 13 districts have submitted a, a completed questionnaire each being reviewed with no indication of their sphere of influence will need to be modified in the next five years. And those five are, those 13 are Bear Valley Community Services District, Boron Community Services District, Delano Mosquito and Abatement District, East Niles Community Services District, Golden Hills Community Service District, Kern County Citrus Pest Control, Kern Mosquito and Vector Control, Mojave Public Utility, North Kern South Tulare Hospital District, Northwest Kern Resource Conservation District, Stallion, Stallion Springs Community Service District, Tehachapi Healthcare District, and Westside Mosquito and Vector Control. Staff has continued to review spheres of influence for the remaining districts, city and cities, and county service areas, and will bring these before the commission as they are completed. With that is my recommendation to confirm the sphere of influences of the 13 special districts as uh, reported. Is there public comment on this item? Are there commission questions or comments on this item? Commissioner Zaragoza, quick question for uh, Mr. Knox. Is this a, uh, a six month event or a 12 month uh, process? How long does it typically take for this type of sphere of influence? We're probably three months in and we've got 13 of the 95 done. <laughs> if that ex. <laughs> Uh, it, it's all going to okay. depend. It's going to depend on uh, how fast they get back to us. Uh, we're going to go out with another round here, probably the next week, reminding them to get that questionnaire into us. Uh, some of them are do have that information back to us, but there's additional information we need. For instance, if they said we do plan to do a sphere change. We're coming back and saying, hey, where is that? What are you planning on doing? And we're, we want to get some of those details figured out before we bring them to you as a commissioner so you know what's, what, you, what you're, vo you're voting on. These, these 13 are the simple ones. They're, they're not going to make any changes or don't have a plan to make a change in the next 13 years. So that's part of the reason they, they've come first. But we're going to push to get them done as fast as we can, but uh, we don't really have a st stick to mm -hmm. force them to do it other than to point out to them that the law requires that this be done. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we could sue them. 
over this, but that's not something our commission has has, has uh, cons really taken any consideration of in the past. So we keep moving forward. Thank you, Mr. Knox. <coughs> Are there other commission questions? I'll entertain a motion to confirm the staff recommendation. So moved. Commissioner Couch, motion. Do I hear a second? I'll second the motion. May we have a roll call, please? Commissioner Ayon? Aye. Commissioner Couch? Yes. Commissioner Albright? Aye. Commissioner Fowler? Yes. Commissioner Parlier? Yes. Commissioner Scrivener? Aye. Commissioner Saragoza? Aye. Commissioner Chavira? Aye. All ayes, motion passes. Thank you. We're on to commission items. Under commission items, item 7B was brought before the commission at the beginning of the meeting. Item 7A will be brought to the commission towards the end of the meeting. We move on now to item 8A under general business, but I want to make a quick comment back to the island annexations. I don't want my negative vote on island annexations to be some kind of a comment about the city of Bakersfield or any of the nice people they've annexed. I simply uh, make that vote as a protest to what I think is an unfair undemocratic law that puts the city in a very paternalistic position toward the people that would like to annex. So with that, we'll go on to general business. 8A is approval of monthly expense list number 2206. Mr. Knox, do you have a comment on that? I do not. Okay. I move approval. Thank you, Commissioner Couch. Do we hear a second to that? Second, Commissioner Ayon. Ayon. Thank you, Commissioner Ayon. Uh, may we have the roll call vote? Commissioner Ayon? Aye. Commissioner Couch? Yes. Commissioner Albright? Aye. Commissioner Fowler? Aye. Commissioner Parlier? Aye. Commissioner Scrivener? Aye. Commissioner Saragoza? Aye. Commissioner Shabira? Aye. All ayes. Motion passes. Thank you. Our next item is 8B, approval of monthly expense list number 22-07. Um, were there questions, public questions or commission questions on the item? I'll entertain a motion to approve. Motion. Commissioner Couch, thank you. May I hear a second? Second. Albright. Oh. Commissioner Albright, thank you. May we have the roll call vote? Commissioner Ayon? Aye. Commissioner Couch? Yes. Commissioner Albright? Aye. Commissioner Fowler? Aye. Commissioner Parlier? Aye. Commissioner Scrivener? Aye. Commissioner Saragoza? Aye. Commissioner Chavira? Aye. All ayes, motion passes. Thank you. We're on to item 8C, legal services. Request for proposal. Selection of alternate legal counsel to represent LAFCO in situations where the lead counsel is not appropriate. Uh, Mr. Knox. Yes. I can't believe he's ever inappropriate. I don't like that phrasing. <laughs> Unavailable, maybe. Conflict of interest right. is, is the other way of putting that. Uh, Colonel Lafco contracts with Mr. Schroeder as our primary attorney, and we are happy with his services. This has nothing to do with that. In the past, Lafco has had agreement with a second uh, firm to represent Lafco in, in instances where the primary attorney has a conflict of interest or for some reason is not available to represent the commission. A secondary counsel that was previously serving Lafco is currently representing a client who is a plaintiff in the suit involving the approval of annexation to Buena Vista Water Storage District, which was annexation 1778. Continu continuing to use this attorney would be a conflict. There are occasions when a primary attorney has to recuse himself, where the item before the commission has been non-controversial and a second attorney has not been necessary. The complexity of recent actions taken by the commission without counsel present exposes the commission to risks that it's unnecessary. 
these items are not re these items are also not receiving legal review before they come before you. To solve this issue, staff initially tried a contract with county council, but was unsuccessful in, in reaching an agreement. Next, staff sent a request for proposal to several law firms in Kern County that represent public agencies. Firms not involved with, the public, with public agency work or firms currently representing plaintiffs in the Buena Vista lawsuit were excluded. There are several areas of law that are commonly addressed by LAFCO Council. Generally, Council has served to advise the Commission staff in compliance related issues, such as making sure the Commission staff are compliant with the Brown Act to ensure public meetings and notices are held properly. The Cortese Knox Hertzberg uh, Local Government Re Re Reorganization Act of 2000 and the principal acts of special districts can be complex and often conflicting. Adherence to labor code and contractual agreements with staff off often falls to council to address. CEQA is often an issue litigated and addressed in courts. Water issues are increasingly becoming uh, before LAFCO and will require an experienced and skilled attorney for LAFCO to navigate. Contractual uh, law matters where the commission enters into an agreement for services with a third party is also reviewed by council. Two firms respond to our RFP, our RFP Braun Gosling and McMurtry Hartsock. Both firms are engaged in work for special districts across Kern County. In the past, both firms have been responsive to inquiries from LAFCO and have handled themselves professionally. We worked with Mr. Gosling on a unique project for the Shafter Wasco Irrigation District where the district annexed property for the sole purpose of providing management of the Sustainable Groundwater Management Act. No actual water was provided to these properties. McMurtry Hartsock also wrote a legal memo that directed, uh, yeah, uh, I'm skipping here. McMurtry Hartsock wrote the legal memo that directed the formation of the Weldon Regional Water District from beginning to end. Both the principal act for county water districts and Cortese Knox Hertzberg have provisions for the formation of a water district that often contradicts, contradict each other. This document, this legal memo, uh, helped resolve those problems and provide a pathway towards a successful formation. It should also be noted that McMurtry Hartsock is uh, in the represent, represent, representation of Buena Vista Water Storage District, is defending Kern Lafco in the West Kern Water District Groundwater Authority lawsuit as required by the indemnification agreement provided by the district. This does not pose a conflict of interest or perceived advantage between McMurtry, Hartsock, and LAFCO, but rather acknowledgement that there is an agreement between the parties. Each firm has submitted their proposal, and I've asked each to make a presentation here tonight to make their pitch as to why LAFCO should co contract with them. Uh, they've been sitting through this meeting, and they, they, I'm surprised they haven't run yet, uh, <laughs> but they're still here. Uh, so I, at this point, I'm going to ask uh, Doug Gosling to make a presentation, and I'll have um, Mr. St. Lawrence, Lawrence do one afterwards. Sounds good. Good afternoon. I was waiting for the uh, for Bud to put me on the camera here. Thank you, Bud. Uh, good <laughs> afternoon, all. Uh, my name is Doug Gosling. As uh, as Blair discussed, uh, some of my background, but at the same time, I would like to say that I agree with the pastor. Uh, Bakersfield is a wonderful place to grow up and live and obviously uh, I'm one of those Kern County kids who grew up here and was like I'm not coming back here and then I lived out of the state and I uh, decided that San Joaquin Valley is the place to be and so I'm back here and I'm very blessed I met my wife here I have three kids I have a nine a six and a four year old and um, have been enjoying Bakersfield and I've been enjoying working with uh, Mr. St. Lawrence on other projects here locally as well uh, I also look forward to Vulcan uh, annexing in because I drive on that road near Vulcan. I'm looking forward to maybe that road getting cleaned up in the future, but uh, that's neither here nor there. Uh, Blair mentioned that a lot of my background, I work for water districts or other public entities, and I deal with uh, public entity meeting laws. I deal with CEQA. I deal with zoning issues. And a lot of times I'm called on by general managers to they say, here's an issue we have. It's come up. Uh, do you have a legal opinion? Can you look at that, please? Can you give us a second opinion? Uh, I end up working with other law firms as well, coordinating and co-counseling, and at the same time, I end up litigating matters as well regarding land use issues, CEQA issues, and um, trying to solve those problems. Uh, that's taken me before state courts, federal courts, and other commissions within the state. And 
you know, final information about me is, is that I grew up working on dairies south of town, and it is, it is strange to see the city driving that way, but uh, such as development. But um, now I get to uh, work on other matters. And so uh, Blair asked if I would uh, submit, and I thought that would be wonderful. And I found out Mr. St. Lawrence's as well. I would hire the man to work on matters myself. And uh, at the same time, I do look forward to your consideration and um, would love to work with Blair as an alternate and uh, also assist your counsel on those issues. Thank you very much. Thank you. Are there public questions for Mr. Kaufman? None for Mr. St. Lawrence. He can't. Uh, we won't let him. <laughs> we could have people online. So oh, they're very they're, good. They're Commissioners there. online. Any questions that I can answer for you? Not online. Thank you, bud. Mr. St. Lawrence? All right, good evening. Thank you. Um, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Isaac St. Lawrence with the firm McMurtry Hartsock Worth in St. Lawrence. It's a mouthful, I know. But um, we are honored to be considered as secondary counsel for LAFCO. Just uh, everybody's time is valuable, so I'll keep this brief. But wanted to point out just a couple things that kind of set our firm apart. One is just the stability of our firm. Our firm has been around for over 40 years. It's been here in Bakersfield. We have represented primarily public entities, uh, a lot of water districts, but the Golden Empire Transit as well, some Rec and Park districts. So we are established here in Kern County. We are public entity attorneys. That is what we do. When Gene McMurtry started the firm in 1978, his first client was a public entity, and we've been doing that since. So when it comes to that uh, unique knowledge that is necessary, we have that. The Brown Act, the Public Records Act, public meetings, resolutions. We are a full service law firm that does everything from contractor review to litigation. As Blair mentioned, we're involved in some of that fun stuff right now with uh, representing LAFCO on behalf of our client, uh, Buena Vista Water Storage District. So we've got the expertise, we've got the uh, stability, but we also, uh, really pride ourselves in the quality of work that we do. If you look at the proposal that we submitted to you, many of our clients have been our clients for 30 years, and you don't get that without providing quality legal services. So we take pride in that, want to do everything in a professional and ethical way, and because of that, we think we'd be a good fit. That being said, you can't go wrong with your choices up here today. As you can see, Doug and I have known each other for a long time, so you guys will be in good hands, and Mr. Schroeder is obviously not going anywhere. So. Because no <laughs> retirement. No. <laughs> but um, thank you again for your consideration. Um, and if you have any questions, be happy to answer them. I did have my business partner, uh, Jim Worth, here. Uh, unfortunately, he had a 6.30 appointment as well tonight, so he had to jet out. So he, he sends his apologies. Thank you. Are there public questions for Mr. St. Lawrence? Are there commission comments or questions? Ms. Uh, Commissioner Couch. It's not necessarily for either of the, the applicants. It's for our staff. I know both of them. I would be comfortable using either of them. Um, do we need to have just one? And I don't even know that they would be interested in this. I haven't asked them this. Do we need to have just one alternate to, or could we could we engage both of them? Yeah, can just, I don't know how often you you don't step out of the meeting very often, but it's uh, a few times mainly, a year. Mainly it was uh, with Lost Hills Utility District. Mm -hmm. uh, we're in a battle, not a battle, but a discussion with Semitropic because they're cutting off our water to do the Sigma. So there's not going to be any more annexations there for a long time. So there probably won't be um, the, um, the the typical conflicts that I've had in the past. <clears throat> but that doesn't mean you know. So they're fighting over a contract they're going to literally never make any money at. Well, I know it. That's <laughs> well, alternate council never has. Yeah. So, um, but you got to have it, and if they're willing to hang on there, you know. And sometimes there's litigation, and I don't do the litigation, so the alternate council w would do it if they wanted to do the litigation. So, guys, I didn't ask you this before. It just occurred to me. Would you be? Would you guys be willing to, to enter into that type of arrangement where you both are backups? Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't have a problem with it. I, I mean, I, my expectation based on the request for proposal was it's going to be pretty, pretty, pretty minimal. 
I apologize. Um, yes, yeah, I wouldn't you. have any problem or concern with that, but my expectation was it's going to be pretty limited, as Mr. Schroeder said. It's okay. the conflicts doesn't happen very often. So. Doug, you agree? Agreed. Okay. So. Do you want to say that about the mic? <laughs> Uh, Doug Gosling and I agree, yes. It's almost like a, a, an outside panel group where you have a panel where, hey, would you work on this matter, would you work on this matter? Sure. So that's a system that works, yes, okay. sir. Um, want to formulate that into a recommendation? Well, I, I hadn't finished my presentation, and the next part was to I'm say that there, to are the multi, there are multiple options, and one of them would be that you could actually hire both firms. Okay. So I think you've already gone down that path. Uh, my recommendation was not going to be one firm or the other. I think they're both qualified and capable of doing the work. And like you said, there might be a case where I contact Doug and Doug says I'm swamped. Call, yeah. call Isaac. I, you know, for Doug's case, I hope that's his problem. <laughs> <laughs> um, so th that is something. Or one of them has more expertise in a specific area than the other. Um, we've done that in the past where. It was a CEQA issue, and Tom said, hey, look towards uh, secondary counsel. They, he has more experience than I do in, on that issue. Um, so that type of thing could definitely work. So my recommendation, I guess, is following yours, is to hire both firms uh, and um, enter into contract negotiations to be brought back to the commission at the next available commission meeting. Is that your motion, yes, Commissioner Couch? Yes, do I hear a second to that motion? <laughs> Chair Zaragoza seconds the motion. Thank motion. you. Are there comments or questions on the motion? Commissioner Albright has a question. Please go ahead, sir. Well, my only uh, comment was that I was also, along with uh, Supervisor Couch, considering the, the fact that uh, I have some familiarity with uh, coin tosses and <laughs> the uh, the issue here is uh, I think Maverick always likes to have more than one wingman. So this is uh, this is really a, a good idea. I, I appreciate the fact that you are considering both firms as the backup to each other. Thank you very much. Thank you, Commissioner. Other commission item questions or comments? This is Commissioner Zaragoza. I wanted to just congratulate LAFCO staff for completing this RFP process. Uh, I think it's very important that we do this. That's all. Thank you. So we have a motion on the floor. Could we have the roll call vote, please? Commissioner Ayon? Aye. Commissioner Couch? Yes. Commissioner Albright? Aye. Commissioner Fowler? Aye. Commissioner Partier? Aye. Commissioner Scrivener? Aye. Commissioner Saragoza? Aye. Commissioner Chavira? Aye. All ayes, motion passes. Thank you. We're on to 8D, cleaning services, request for proposal, selection of cleaning services for office at 5300 Lenox Avenue, Suite 303, Mr. Knox. Yeah, the contract with the previous ser service was terminated when they asked for an increase. And I told them they'd have to bring it before the commission because you're the one who uh, approves contracts. They decided they'd want to do that, so we yeah, we uh, went out to bid uh, several agencies. We have two that were legitimate bids. Clean Bright provided the most professional uh, presentation and had the lowest cost of the two. So it's my recommendation to approve clean, uh, executive officer to contract with Clean Bright uh, with an immediate start date. Thank you. Is there public comment on this item? Are there commission comments or questions? I'll move your recommendation. Commissioner Couch moves. Do we have a second? Second, Ayon. Commissioner Ayon is second. Could we have the roll call vote, please? Commissioner Ayon? Aye. Commissioner Couch? Yes. Commissioner Albright? Aye. Commissioner Fowler? Aye. Commissioner Parlier? Aye. Commissioner Sar um, Saragoza? Commissioner Scrivener? Aye. Commissioner Chavira? Aye. All ayes, motion passes. Thank you. Now I'm going to be turning the meeting over to immediate past chairman, 
Scribner to conduct uh, the next portion of the meeting. Thank you, Chair Fowler. Um, good evening, everyone. I am um, going to go ahead and introduce the item, and then I'll, I'll go to Mr. Knox. So, um, so this is the um, interview and selection of the restricted public member and restricted public member alternate. And so, uh, Mr. Knox, if you could start us off, please. Yeah, thank you. Uh, to start, I've asked Chair Fowler to vacate the chair as she is a candidate for the restricted public member seat and would be a perceived conflict for her to continue to be chair. Uh, typically, we would hand this over to the vice chair, which is Gary McKibben, who isn't here. So we turn to our immediate past chair, which is uh, Commissioner Scribner. Appreciate him doing that. We have four candidates to fill the restricted public member seat and the alternate for Colonel Lafco. The restricted uh, refers to those who among the com commission can vote on this item. Only two Board of Supervisors, that'd be uh, Mr. Couch and Mr. Scribner, and two special districts, in this case, Mr. Shavera, uh, can have a vote on this item. Um, Commissioners Zaragoza, Parlier, Aon, and Albright will need to sit this one out. Last meeting, three of the candidates spoke. I only see one of the candidates here today. Others may be online, I'm not sure. In the packet is information on all four. I would have asked each to attend in attendance to make a short presentation again to make their pitch as to why they should be the restricted public member. It is at the discretion of the chair how long each candidate can speak. I took the liberty of asking them to go, not go beyond five minutes. Commissioners can ask questions of the candidates of any, at any time. Once we get through the candidates, uh, there will be there will need to be a motion and a vote on the restricted public member. And once that seat is filled, there will be need to be a second motion to fill the alternate public member. Uh, my recommendation, recommendation uh, to the commission is they hear all four candidates and choose the best to serve for the next four years as sitting member and the alternate. I was going to call these in alphabetical order, which would put uh, Barbara Fowler first. If you'd like to say a few words. Do I have to do anything to this? I'm Barbara Fowler. I've served as alternate for a number of years and I'm proud to serve as a commissioner now. It's been a very interesting side job for me uh, in addition to uh, helping to raise children and be involved in philanthropies in the community. And I feel badly, last time I spoke to you, I completely forgot to acknowledge my husband of 52 years, Gary Fowler, who uh, manages to allow me to have a little free reign and do the things I need to do in the community. Uh, he is a former teacher, high school teacher, uh, coach, athletic director, and administrator. And as I say, we have 52 years under our belt. He doesn't have me completely trained yet. Um, I told you last time that one of my greatest joys has been to work as a member of Assistance League of Bakersfield uh, because it is a stellar organization and its chief uh, philanthropy is to dress needy school children for school and each year we hit an 3,000 plus mark uh, in giving children two sets of clothing, a backpack, a jacket, um, shoes, underwear, the whole shebang, because we know that when children feel good about how they're dressed, they can learn. So that's been a, a special favorite activity of mine. Um, I think I've been a good LAFCO member. I may be a little grumpy on a few issues, but uh, I do uh, make myself familiar with what's going on in our packet, and I'm prepared to vote at each meeting, and I've enjoyed being chair. It's fun to be the boss. That, that's all I have. Okay. Uh, Thank you, Commissioner Fowler. D um, Mr. Knox, uh, do we have, or Mr. Rice, do we have any one, any of the other candidates online or in, pre in attendance who would like to make a presentation? There are none online. We do not. Uh, the other three are Jose Gonzalez, who has been the current alternate 
Alicia Hickson, who spoke last time, and Don Lonquist, who we have not heard from. Thank you. Okay, um, seeing then that we have no more applicants to make uh, a presentation, I'll ask if any of the commissioners have any questions or comments. Okay, I'm not hearing any then. Um, are there any public comments? There are none. Thank you. Okay, then I will at this time call for a motion for the restricted public member. Um, so a motion for nomination and uh, we'll need a second and then we'll move to the vote. I'll make a motion for the nomination. Of? Um, for, am I supposed to vote on just for the move, right? This is for the regular seat, yes, and you have to pick one of the four to nominate. Uh, I will make a motion for Mrs. or current chair Fowler, Barbara Fowler. Oh, sorry. Very good. Okay, staff, were you able to record the motion and the second? Who made each motion? Uh, first by Commissioner uh, Shavira, a second by Commissioner Couch. Thank you. Then we'll go to roll call vote, please. All right, well, first, let me ask if there are any other, uh, do we ask for any other nominations, council, or do we do this vote first? Yes, you'd ask for any other nominations. Okay, then uh, at this time, I'll, I'll entertain any other nominations. Okay, hearing none then, let's go to a roll call vote um, on the motion and second to uh, select Commissioner Fowler for um, reappointment. Commissioner Couch? Yeah, yes. Commissioner Scrivener? Aye. Commissioner Chavira? Aye. All ayes, motion passes. Thank you, everyone, and I will relinquish the Chair seat back to uh, Chair Fowler. Thank um, you. Before we do, uh, we do need to fill the alternate seat. Oh, I'm so sorry. Sorry, guys. I, my apologies. I, I skipped right past that part. Okay. So we thank need you. a motion between the other three candidates. Yes. Thank you so much. I, I apologize. So um, now at this time, I'd entertain a motion then for the alternate position. Um, may I? Um, is that currently held by Jose Gonzalez? It is. Okay. I'd like to nominate him. For that, for the, to retain that seat, thank you. And I will second that. Okay, so that's uh, motion couch, and and um, and the second um, was uh, obviously um, Teresa. So thank you. And um, do we have? We don't have any other nominations. Correct. Uh, so um, we'll go to the roll call vote, please. Oh, I'm sorry. Public comment. Are there any any uh, public comments? It's just the three. Okay, none. hearing none, then I'll go to the roll call vote. Commissioner Couch? Yes. Commissioner Scrivener? Aye. Commissioner Trevira? Aye. All ayes. Motion passes. Thank you. Okay, so am I off the hook now? You're, You're off, off the hook. hook. Now, Mr. Knock. You are <laughs> off the hook. Great. Thank you so much. All right. Commissioner Couch, it was just it's just the three voting on that item. Even even if she was even if she was, she's not included because it's the, correct. Thank you, Commissioner Scrivener. Thank you. Um, I appreciate that. Uh, now we're ready for the legislative update. Yes, thank you. The state legislature state legislature concludes their yearly session at the end of August. Included in the commission's packet are a list of bills that were tracked as part of the CSDA Legislative Committee. One bill sp specifically affects LAFCO SB 938 from Hertzburg, which changes the voting threshold for dissolution of a special district. SB 938 went through the legislative process early and has already been signed by the governor. The language of the bill was negotiated primarily primarily between CalAFCO and CSDA with some heat exchanges between both sides. I was uniquely privileged to have 
to be able to see the progress of the bill from both the Calafco Legislative Committee when I served as vice chair, uh, and then as a member of the CSD Legislative Committee when I was on the other side. Um, when it came to a vote at the CSDA Legislative Committee, I actually recused myself because I had worked on it for CalAFCO. It didn't seem appropriate for me to, to move forward. Anyway, uh, the bill went through the final steps towards passage. Both lead negotiators for CSDA and CalAFCO have left their responsive re respective organizations and it appears that both sides are now working together well at this moment. And that's my legislative report. Could you give us that bill number again? It's SB 938. And where does it stand at this point then? The governor has signed it. It's been signed. It's Thank been you. signed. Are there any questions about the legislative update by public or commissioners? All right, we're going to go down to uh, F, executive officer miscellaneous items. Mr. Knox. As the drought continues, we're seeing more wells run dry or some sort of noncompliance with water quality standards as groundwater levels continue to decline. Discussions about how to address these issues are happening with special district water providers, mutual water companies, and individual well owners as they are looking for options. The state water board is asking cities and special districts to take, on, take over many of these small systems that are having problems, but the process is slow. In some cases, these will need to come before LAFCO to increase the size, the boundaries, and spheres of these cities and special districts, and expect to see uh, these coming our way in the near future. Uh, next meeting, we hope to bring additional uh, sphere of influence reviews. We're going to continue to work on that. Uh, we know of an additional 30. 35 annexations that are possibly out there right now, but we currently only have one in our office. Uh, so expect to see a few, few annexations from us uh, in the next several months. We have been in discussions uh, on the potential development of a proposal to create a new uh, community service district that has taken considerable amount of our time currently. So we are working on multiple issues right, right now. Uh, I should also mention the CalAFCO conference. Currently, we have six reserved for the CalAFCO conference, which is October 19th to the 21st uh, at the John Wayne Airport uh, Hyatt in Newport Beach. If any commissioner is still interested in going, uh, shame on you for missing the early bird registration, uh, but we can still find you a spot at the conference, but I can't guarantee you a room at the same location. If you're interested, please talk to, to Patty about that. Um, as, and as we close, I would like to thank uh, Michael Heimer, who helped uh, Mr. Rice today. Um, he had to uh, attend this meeting remotely, and I appreciate Mr. Rice hurrying his way back here um, to a location where he could actually be part of this meeting. He's had some family issues he's been taking care of, and um, I'm glad he's been able to, to, to work on those as he gets this stuff done. With that, my report is, is finished. Are there any questions on that report by public or commissioners? A no closed session. Do I always forget? Do I need a vote on adjournment? Oh. Our next meeting is scheduled.